Annyeong Haseyu. My name is George Gigari and I am the Chief of Mission of IOM, that's the UN Migration Agency in Bangladesh. I manage the whole mission. I am based in Dhaka, in the capital, but I obviously travel very often to Cox's Bazaar, where most of our staff are working on the refugee crisis on the border with, with Myanmar. So in the Rohingya camps, we do almost everything. We do management of the camps, we do health activities, we do shelter and what we call non-food items, which is household items. Um, we also do emergency preparedness and response for natural disasters for the camp. For us, what we are beginning to really focus on right now is preparing for the monsoon season, which means rain, wind and storms. Remember, Bangladesh is very prone to natural disasters. It's also a very fragile habitat. You have a very weakly structured shelters. They're all very close to each other, and they're on hilly areas, which makes them very, very vulnerable. Another thing that happened is all the trees were cut down for fuel for, to make fire by the refugees. So when you cut down trees from slopes, the slopes become unstable. You have to relocate the ones that are most vulnerable, which are usually the ones on top of the hill. And then there, there, you, there are certain ways you use like these sandbags and certain structures to make the slope stronger so it doesn't slide. So 80% is women and uh, people under 18 years old. When we're talking about um, uh, health problems, there are special vaccinations for children. For example, recently there was a chicken pox outbreak that is focused on vaccinations for children, special nutrition supplements uh, for children, uh, anti and uh, postnatal care for women, um, distribution of special hygiene kits, um, water supply, design of shelters for families are different from, for example, uh, male-headed households. We look at families where there are no men and only mother with children and they receive additional support. They also receive opportunities for cash for work programming and some um, so that they can get some cash and little income. So in the beginning of the crisis, when you have hundreds of thousands of people coming in, you're not really thinking about governance of the camps, you're thinking about saving lives. Now when the camp is a little bit more stable, we have to make sure that refugees have the voice, and that they're empowered, and that they participate in all the decision-making about them. It's the only way it will work. And the way to do this is to create camp governance committees, right? You have a committee, like, like a town, you know, like you, each camp needs to have refugees, men and women, who speak and represent the refugees so we can have a dialogue mm -hmm. and we can discuss with them what's best for them. Nobody reads academic articles anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I, I joined the trend and I thought, yeah, it seems that people do notice. Well, yeah, I think it's important that people understand that these refugees are just like us. They are people with different characters, different ages, different genders, different religions. And um, if you just focus on how terrible this situation is, which is important, you have to make sure that people understand how difficult life is for refugees. Mm -hmm. But then there is something, there's a phenomenon called compassion fatigue. So I think it's important to find different angles. Uh, firstly, to keep people's attention, and secondly, to show that there is more to refugees than just suffering. As a host government, as a country that is taking in refugees, we have to bear in mind. So, first of all, if there is a demonstration against refugees or against migrants or against immigration, it's very important to understand why they're coming. It is very, very dangerous to just dismiss them as racist and say, oh, everyone who's against refugees are racist and we should not listen to them. Very dangerous and wrong. We should listen to them because they're, first of all, they're part, they're your citizens, right? How do you convince someone? Only when you understand what they're afraid of, right? So we have to talk to them. 
if there's a protest, we have to go to them and say, what are you afraid of? Why are you protesting? What is the source of your anxiety, fear, and frustration? Usually, it's related to fears about culture, new culture coming in. People look different, different traditions, rituals. Um, secondly, it is uh, uh, related to economic and social issues, jobs, most importantly. People are afraid the refugees will take their jobs. Just that it is important to listen to people that are protesting. It's equally important to understand that not every refugee is a saint and Einstein. When I say there are people like us, some people are good, some people are not so good, but mainly they're good, right? So we shouldn't say every refugee is fantastic and is going to be a millionaire and make our country rich, because it's not true. You're going to get a very small number, but some bad people. But mostly they are good, and that's what history has shown us, that mostly refugees are people like us, they're good people, and they're very motivated, they're very happy that they got to South Korea or Germany or U.S., they're very happy, so they want to help, right? What do they want to do? They want to get a job. They want to pay taxes. They want to get educated. In my experience, the best way, absolutely the best way, to work through these problems is to get someone who's protesting and get a refugee and just get them to talk to each other. Put them together in one room. You'll be amazed how quickly the temperature goes down. So there are three things that I believe Koreans can do and continue doing, because many of you are already doing this already. First of all, is attention to the crisis. The focus of the media and people in the news remains on the crisis. Two is funding. The, there are over 20,000 humanitarians working in the camps. We need funding to make sure that the basic services continue to meet the most basic needs. Number three, it is important that we also focus on the long term, right? The, 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 the humanitarian assistance is a short-term solution. The long-term solution can only be re refugees returning to their houses. We must also keep in mind that the, the long-term solution is the only solution to this crisis. Thank you.